Okay, good morning. Welcome. Mike Nicholson from Six Sales here. Morning, Adam. Morning. How's it going? Good. Yeah, very, very good. Thank you. Um, just um, as we're talking about uh, comedy today and uh, making people laugh, I thought I'd just um, start with a few pieces of news that I noticed on the BBC this morning. Um, so the United States are considering banning all Chinese technology from their country. Um, experts are saying that time could be running out for a particular popular social media app, TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Um, also, experts have said that during lockdown, the rates of depression have risen with the dwarf community uh, surprisingly most affected. Statistically speaking, six out of seven dwarves are not happy. Um, obviously, that's a big problem. Um, and that's it, really. Um, there was one more that I didn't finish writing because uh, I ran out of time. So good morning. Welcome to uh, Six Cells. I'm um, really looking forward to, to talking to you today. Um, as I, I sort of mentioned to you off air there, I have basically been uh, stereotyped through my career as having awful dad jokes. In fact, even before I became a dad. Um, but what I lack in quality, I make up for in quantity. So if I keep trying to insert them into the... Um, into the show today, please uh, please accept my apologies in advance. Perhaps this is some sort of elaborate ruse to try and get onto your hive mind of com comedy writers, uh, comedy writers. And perhaps you'll think, you know what, that Mike Nicholson's the guy we need, but um, probably you never know. You never know. There's always <laughs> there's always room for a couple more. I'm, I'm suggesting probably not, but you know, you never know. You never know. So um, so Adam, what um, t tell me a little bit about um, white label comedy, uh, why you set it up, and what you do. All right, so I'm glad you asked because we are, you know, we're an unusual company to even exist. We sort of, we evolve almost by accident, but really simply, White Label Comedy is a creative agency powered by a hive mind of comedy writers, and we help brands make their stuff entertaining and engaging, which is something that they always seem to struggle with. So that, that's kind of us in a, in a nutshell. And I think, you know, we've, we, we mostly focus on social, but we do other stuff as well. Um, you know, we'll, we've just done, uh, well, we've just written a script for a video for the RAF Museum for their, their sort of reopening. It's a nice sort of funny trailer for them. But most of our, you know, our bread and butter is basically jokes for social. It's, it's, it's tweets, it's, you know, it's funny Facebook posts because that's what brands need. You know, they, 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 they need to be, yeah, they need to be engaging their audience rather than just broadcasting. You know, it, it's social media for a reason and, and, and comedy is a great way to do that. Yeah, I get asked quite a lot, how do I make people share my content without mm. actually asking them to share my content? And I would imagine comedy is a, a fantastic way of doing that because I know if I ever share anything, it's because I found it amusing or I found it really interesting. And I, you kind of, by sharing it, you kind of leave a little bit of yourself on it, don't you? You're basically endorsing it in a way to your wider network. So I would imagine Damn comedy straight. is a great... That, that's, a, that's a super important point, actually. And I think, you know, when we were first, when we were first trying to break down, like, because obviously, you know, when we began this journey, we just had some funny people and we knew we wanted to use them for brands. We didn't really know why it would work or how it would work or, you know, what, what the processes were. But when you look at what motivates someone to share a post, it is, you know, often it is an endorsement. And it's, it's, it's really weird. Like, if, if they want to, if they want to make that endorsement, if you give them something funny and they agree with, that's the thing, it jokes people agree with, mm. they will share. So, it's, it, you know, in, and we'll get into this in, in sort of more tedious detail, but in every joke, there's a little bit of truth. And if you, if you can line that truth up with your audience's opinions, they will share it. They will, they, they, they will have no choice but to share it. So, you know, the, 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 and the way to make someone share something is just to make it good. That's the other thing that brands need to realise is, is you can't you can't trick people into sharing stuff. You can't force them into doing it. You just need to make good stuff, and then then they'll share it. That's that's the key. Yeah. So if I so I would imagine there are companies out there that that totally bought in already. You think yeah, I'd I'd love to uh, to make funny tweets. Um, there are companies out there that think I quite like the idea of that, but I don't think I'm particularly funny um, like me. Um, but then, as I say, I make up for in quantity. Eventually, I just like it's like a blunt instrument. I just bunch, bludgeon you until eventually you can sort of get some sort of smile. Uh, and there's other companies that go, I literally wouldn't know how to make or if I should make my brand funny. So, are there any categories of company that you've come across you thought this definitely shouldn't we sh we shouldn't insert humour here, um, or are there particular categories of companies that it works really well for? And um, I think like for me. 
there's never any kind of niche that's off limits. There, there, are, there are people that we speak to who think their niche is off limits. Um, you know, that, like, so, so a funeral director's just like, oh, we could never make jokes. I was like, no, you know, you could definitely make jokes. There's, Gallo's humor is brilliant. There's, yeah. the, I, I think the key, the key thing really is that it's, if it's too much of a diversion from their existing brand, it's, it's, it's dangerous. So, you know, it's, it helps if they're already, I think the, the, the best clients for this kind of comedy uh, so if you think about bigger brands, they're, they're, it's the ones that are already a little bit lighthearted on screen. They put all, all their money into their TV ads, but they have no idea how to make that translate onto, onto social. Um, but honestly, there, yeah, there isn't, there isn't a, a type of business or a type of um, offer that you can't liven up with comedy because you, whatever you're doing, you're, you're selling to people. I think one thing that actually initially we were getting a lot of pushback on was a lot of people were saying, well, it's, it's all well and good, you know, B2C, I can see it working for B2C. I can, I can see, you know, if, if you're selling to, to consumers, easy, but if you're selling, if it's B2B, there's no way this would work. But, you know, we've, 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 we've proven that it, that it can and it does. And I think the, the clever thing about B2B is because comedy is like, you know, we said before, if they agree with it and it's funny, they'll share it. Well, that sort of narrowing of the things that your audience cares about and agrees on you know if you're trying to sell a chocolate bar the things that your audience agrees on outside of chocolate's nice isn't that big but if you're trying to sell an editing software for instance we did, we did some some sort of a, a, a mock-up for a potential client recently who's in the in the video editing space and all of their clients agree that premiere pro's render time is awful so instantly you know we, we, we there's loads of levers that you know the audience agrees with so done right b2b can be even more successful um, but yeah, I, I think, to be honest, the, the one thing for me is that it's the sensibilities of the marketing team. At the end of the day, like you, you yourself, you enjoy a laugh and that kind of need, you know, you don't need to have jokers all the way to the top, but there are some people that just will not accept that comedy can work. And mm -hmm. I always find it rather than trying to persuade them, just focus on those that are already, you know, already, already interested. Well, when you, yeah, I mean, get, taking your B2B point um, just a little bit further there, if you, if you um, accept that the, the job of marketing is to grab attention um, because if, without attention, nothing else can happen. Yeah. Um, and then if you look at your LinkedIn feed or your Twitter feed, if you're a B2B marketer uh, and you look at your uh, LinkedIn or Twitter feed, it's very corporate. Um, everyone's the same. It's usually a line of text, which is carefully written and probably went through about 15 rounds of, um, uh, sign off before it went out yeah. with a picture and a link to a blog post and it, and it becomes a little bit like this corporate wallpaper so um, the way to stand out is to do something different to that right and and I've got sort of real examples of how I've done that in the past where I started I remember very clearly starting some days I absolutely love my job now the word love doesn't appear very often in b2b uh, marketing posts because it's not it's just not a thing um, and I looked at the the number of people that eventually liked shared and viewed that versus me just sharing blog posts this is when I was working full-time for a company and, and and it was exponentially more because it stood out and it felt real um, and if I think if you use comedy it feels human um, I, I mean um, you said there's nothing that's that's off li limits and that sort of made me think back to some Ricky Gervais stand-up where he was saying um, somebody on Twitter had sort of had a go at him saying, oh, you shouldn't joke about rape. Oh, no, no, he's, no, you, you shouldn't joke about diabetes. And he said, seriously, I joke about the Holocaust and rape. <laughs> and you're telling me I shouldn't joke about diabetes. So, um, yeah, I mean, potentially funeral directors um, could, could stand out because, again, quite grey, stuffy, sombre type of notes, um, but they're all the same. If one of them were to be brave enough to go, you know, do you know what? We're going to try and have a little bit of a laugh. That again reminds me of Ricky Gervais. They had a bit of a laugh at his mum's funeral. Um, so, um, yeah, so yeah, no, I definitely I think you, think... You're on something there as well. Because even, even in, imagine a world where you might, you know, one, jokes for brands, actually it's really hard to offend people and get it wrong because you're starting with the brand message and working out from there. So you're not, you know, it's not going to be out of step with what they're already talking about. But just that pattern interrupt that you're talking about and, and the, the, you know, the increased number of eyeballs you get just by being different mm -hmm. is going to outweigh any, uh, you know, potential negative from those one or two people in a thousand that think, Oh, don't know. Funeral home should be, you know, should, yeah. should be uh, making those jokes. Yeah. So, so I think it's, you're, you're spot on with the pattern interrupt type. 
type yeah. of thing. I actually messaged last night, just thought of it like a, a, um, a flash of inspiration. I messaged sort of the senior marketers at Burger King and Paddy Power because I think that they're exceptional. They're great. Uh, at, um, at using comedy in their social posts. Unfortunately, neither of them could make it as such short notice as you'd imagine. But um, um, can you think of any other brands that um, you may have worked with or maybe haven't worked with, but you kind of admire in terms of the way that they use comedy to, to get um, engagement on, on social? Do you know what? I think my favorite brand that we don't work with uh, is Innocent Drinks. I think Innocent Smoothies, are, and, and I, th I think it's because they have nailed what their audience want to hear. So, you know, we, we mostly craft jokes, actual jokes, but, you know, Innocent, right at, the, right at the beginning of the pandemic, they were just posting a reminder about what day it was, um, where they're like, this is your daily reminder of what day it is, today's day is Wednesday. And that was getting, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of, of engagement because that's, they, they were on the money. And, and, and I just think they've got a real way. I, I don't know what the structure is of their team. I'd love to see inside it. But they've got, they've got a real way of just, just bringing innocent to the world rather than expecting the world to come to them. You know, they, they take what they do and they put it everywhere conceptually. And yeah, I, I think I, I'm, I'm loving what they do. But I think, um, yeah. That, Truth be told, like even the brands that do do comedy, I'm not always loving the way they do it. Like like Snickers recently, the the, the UK Twitter feed started posting loads of random jokes, and those random jokes might be mildly amusing, but they had f all to do with Snickers or Snickers audience or even anyone that might like chocolate. They were just trying to be funny. And yeah. you, you remember, you're still marketing here. You need you're still you know, you're still trying to do something functional with the Snickers brand. And yeah, it's, and actually I won't go into, the, I, I won't harp on, but there was one joke they posted that they got a lot of flack for because it was, it was a bit offensive and they had no excuse because it wasn't, a, it didn't make sense in their world. So yeah, it's, it's right. I think that's what my son would call thing. chasing the clout. I think that's what the young people are calling it these days. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, jokes for jokes sake, uh, no real link to the brand. But do you know what? That's sorry to you. You'll have, you'll have to keep interrupting interrupt me and stop, stop me hopping on. But oh. that, like, that's not only um, bad, a bad move. It's also a missed opportunity. One one thing I, I've so we're always evolving our own processes in, inside our little hive mind, and as, as we write, and the jokes where we just start with the brand and we just try and be funny are always so much weaker than when, the, when we start with the brand and we go, right, well, how can we match this brand into the pandemic? Or how can we match this brand into a news story? Or how can we match it into a pain point? You know, a joke at its best should be two things smashed together, kind of made to work, even though they shouldn't work. And it's, yeah, I, I think jokes for joke's sake are often actually a bit eggy, whereas the perfect joke is like, oh yeah, that make, it's not just funny, it makes sense. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 think, I think you're right. I think you're right, which probably leads us perfectly into my next question, which was, I know that you um, very kindly put together some specific jokes for the companies, um, hopefully appearing um, or, and watching this video. Um, so um, do you wanna share some of those uh, with yeah. us at this stage and sort of talk about how they kind of link into what the company do, does what, what, what I'll do is, so what there are, one of the things I love to talk about, and I will talk about it today, is like, there, for me, there are lots of great reasons why uh, comedy works for brands. And each of the tweets we've written for, for um, the, the, you know, the, the companies that you're watching sort of represents a different point and a different reason why, why comedy works. So I'm gonna, if it's all right with you, I'm going to sort of step through yeah. those points and show, you know, show the examples. Perfect. Um, so... First thing, first things first, and, and we, we don't have any examples for this one, but really simply, the, the most obvious thing that comedy does is comedy gets people talking, right? So that, that's, you know, that's really important. That's kind of basic. That's, that's what engagement is. And that's, that's first and foremost, we, we spoke about that earlier. But my second, my second sort of favorite point is that it sells without selling. So there's actually, there's, there's I'm going to show you, let me try and share my screen and see whether this goes weird. Oh, you've disabled it. So can you let me, can you tell it that I'm allowed to share my screen? Um, tell it I'm cool. How would I do that? It's down by the screen share option. There should be a little sort of up arrow um, just yeah. to the right of it that says enable or something. Yeah, that should, is that okay now? Uh, yep, yeah, we're good. All right, so let's see. 
Right, can you see, can you see these two posts on my screen? Yes. Right, so this is, the, this is some work we did for a client recently. They, they, they are uh, a, basically a, a, an independent living community. Um, they, wanted to, they wanted to be a bit, a, a bit more accessible, a bit more funny. Two posts, side by side, both posted in, in, in the same, well, about two weeks apart, a week apart. The one on the left is like a naked sales pitch. It's come, come to our webinar, right? And it got 11 likes. The one on the right is uh, just a joke but it got 14,000 likes, it got 34 comments, 300 odd shares. Now, I bet you, if you're lucky, you'll get one, maybe one of these people on the left will, will have gone to the webinar, but of, you know, of the 1,800 people that engaged with us on the right, how many of them were intrigued? How many of them decided to find out more? How many of them were like, oh, those guys are cool. And I think, it, I, I actually think that this, and I've got no stats, but I know they had a fair few people in that webinar, I think this one would have done a better job of getting people into the webinar just because it built their curiosity than, than um, just offering up straight up. And I think that's, yeah. that's, that's something Branch should be doing, doing more right now. We're going to move on to the, uh, the tweets I've actually written for, for today because I think another important thing is jokes prove that you're one of us, right? That, that's, that's, again, huge. So here are three tweets that I've written basically for you. Uh, very well, and I say, and so heavy rider. Like when when people hire the hive mind. By the way, can you see me as well as the screen? Yes, or you I just can, think because yeah. yeah. it'd be really boring for people just to look at a PowerPoint and <laughs> and that would be tedious. So, like when you hire the hive mind, we've got thirty different writers, you know, different perspectives, different sensibilities, all collaborating. Obviously, for this, what you've got is Alex. He's one of, one of my one of my kind of internal team. He, he, he's one of our regular jet writers. He's one he's one of the best. So it's still good, but it's not you know this isn't like proper high mind level. But I still really like them, and I think think like so let's just think about like this this first one here, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try not to perform it like a fucking stand up because I'm not you know I'm not even a comedy writer, let alone stand up. But letting lead slip away is a surefire route to business failure especially for a dog walker. Now, one, it's kind of cute, it's kind of funny, but think about like, what that is telling people. One, it's telling them that you understand their, their problem, their pain. You know, we're all, we all want more leads. We all want to convert those leads. That's a really simple pain point. And if you post that and I read it, I, I don't, like, the, the other option to make that same, like I know about leads and converting them, the other, the other statement is quite a patronizing, hey, you're struggling and you need my help. And, and that sets our, you know, our, our sort of bullshit detector on alert. Whereas if you post this, I'll just go, oh yeah, cool. Yeah, Mike knows about leads, cool. You, know, you, you, you just absorb it and it shows that you understand our pain. And I think that, again, that's, that, that's yeah, that's really helpful. And, and that's, that's one of the things that, that jokes do really well is there, there are, substitute for authority building um yeah. and i think that that's quite interesting yeah um so i won't read through the others like a like a weirdo but let's have a look yeah so we, we did some more for um one of the one of the companies that is hopefully watching um i love this one that that top left one i love that that made me laugh and and you know what right it's, the thing is it's not just that it's funny but it's also, it's, made, it's, it's showing, you know, their ideal market, their ideal audience is someone that is, you know, a little bit like, oh, well, I can't really afford designer clothes, but you know what? I don't want them. So you're giving someone something they can agree with, like we said earlier. And I think that's, that's also really powerful. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's a big thing. Another great way to use comedy is to take a stand. Now, this is something I was reading about recently. It sounds crazy, but two thirds of consumers apparently would boycott a brand uh, or you know, choose a different brand based on where they stand on, on, on key issues. And that's even if the issues have fuck all to do with, sorry for my language, I don't know if this, this is going out on Prime Time TV. Uh, if they, um, what am I saying? Yeah, you know, even even if the issues have nothing to do with that brand, they just go, well, they haven't said anything. So jokes are a much simpler way to sort of make a light stand without offending people, um, or without, you know, without risk. And, it's, and also they'll be, uh, the, well, the fact that you made the stand in the first place is also gonna get more attention because people will share it and you give them something some to agree with. So that's, that's a big thing. This, again, I think this is crucial in business, this number five, Comedy helps you look at stale topics with fresh eyes. So 
we were talking before about, you know, really all a joke is, is this thing over here and this thing over here, and they shouldn't fit together, but with a clever twist, you've made them fit together and you've kind of made something new. When you realize that, like, you know, you've, if you've got the same blog post you posted 12 times with sort of the law of diminishing returns, it doesn't just give you another excuse to post that blog post about organic reach. It gives you an, like a, a way to reframe it that people might even be interested. And I think that's, that's um, yeah, that's, that's really helpful. Again, I, I won't read these out like, 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 like not, but they're on the screen. People can read them. And I think that's the other thing is jokes like this are meant to be read. You know, they're, they're some of my favorites work written down, not when read out. Um, but yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, that's that's great Funny enough no joke works when i read it out i don't know whether ah. that's something broken in me i'm not sure i disagree i disagree <laughs> i disagree I, I love i love the headlines at the beginning and so, so you know some some more here that we did for the dressmakers guild so uh let's have a look what, what have we got yeah like so the one in the middle is a prime like example of it's not a hilarious joke but it is a cute amusing way to reframe what they do and what they're all about and you know it's built using the techniques of, of, of joke writing i think i i love the formula one gag because you know fast fashion has an enormous environmental impact but to be fair the clothes aren't the biggest problem with formula one it's 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 nice because it's the people that want to make statements like this they're you know they're, they're their friends their fans their followers will be bored of them harping on about um the issues but it gives them a way to do it that isn't annoying and isn't, you know, isn't tedious. Yeah. So that's great. And I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen, but the, I think the last, the last point I want to make, my, my, my sort of, my favorite uh, thing about comedy and marketing and why it works is you'll, you'll know that uh, like, you know, the, the things other people say about us are more powerful than the things we say about ourselves. Like, you know, just the fact that you were telling the world that Adam's coming onto my, to, to, to my Facebook live or my, my, my Zoom, makes me seem more interesting and impressive than I than, than it would if I said it myself like we already know that, that, that that's bare minimum so the really interesting thing about a joke is when the brand posts a joke like if initially it's it's them telling a story it's, you know, it's them saying something making a statement but the second someone retweets it reshares it it's not it's a story about that brand you know it, there's a funny joke but we're, we're sharing it and we're saying hey this brand's funny you, you should let them in you should let them be a part of your world a part of your feed like there's a reason why you don't even really notice those the funny jokes from the brands until they've had like a hundred you know million squillion retweets it's because that actually what we like is that everyone is sharing this joke from innocent not the, mm -hmm. you know the jokes one thing but it's the story they're sharing and it literally you know the way I see it is it turns your followers into influencers you know we used to have to pay people to pretend to care about us but instead we're giving our audience you know, they're micro influencers and they don't demand a paycheck and they'll push our story out there and it's yeah it's killer that i'm going to stop talking that's that's me you know, that's, yeah, that's me but yeah that's those are the reasons why i think you know and interestingly none of those reasons were because it's funny you know the, the fact that comedy is funny is also a big part of why it works for brands but that's not at the core of it it's much more nuanced than that right thank you so much for putting that together i really appreciate it um I got a couple of questions. So once the hive mind has created a joke um, and it's out there, you pretty much have lost control of it, right? Um, it's, you, it's not something you can copyright or, because obviously yeah. jokes are the most shareable sort of yeah. like mini stories, if you like, that people will share around. So, so how, do you, how do you kind of use that to your advantage and, and sort of leading towards, have you ever been able to find a way to insert a brand into a joke in a way that, it can't be taken out again for the joke to make sense. So as it's being shared and people are talking and, and, you know, like um, sort of face to face or in the pub or whatever, they're telling the joke with the brand still inside. I really love the pocket joke, for example, um, you know, whatever pocket size you want, but that doesn't have to be the dressmakers guild that you could use that without inserting the brand. So I just wondered if you've, you've ever had any success. Do you know what? I think it's not been a priority because for us, the content is disposable. You know, it, it's, it's, it's comedy content is, you put it out there, it's out there. Um, and it's more about the sustained impact of that brand being funny and entertaining than the one, you know, the, the, it's, it's like the first person to share a video, uh, 
that's the video. You know, everyone's filming an event. The first video up online gets all the views. It, as long as you're first there with the joke, you still get the credit. I think there are, uh, yeah, I, 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 um, I think you, if you try and own these things and try and keep these things, it doesn't work. But that, that's also why, you know, what we don't do is we don't write a joke and then try and reversion it for 10 brands. You know, we, we, we write a joke, we give it away, out it goes, and we move yeah. on. But, but that's also because even though, even though the Dressmakers Guild joke, you could tell it without it being attached to the brand. Look at, like, look, you know, look at it there on the screen. It's got, it's got their logo, it's got their name, it's being shared from that brand. And I think the better the, better the jokes, the more, you know, we, we did a sort of, we did a, a, a Twitter takeover thing for Shopify to show what it would look like if Shopify had hired us. And half of those, half of those jokes had Shopify sort of baked into the, you know, the, the name. You, it wouldn't make sense without the brand. The other half didn't. Um, but yeah, it's it's yeah. If, if you try and protect it, you you lose your mind. I think. Yeah, I'm just I was the the, the Durex example that you gave about Dominic Cummings. I'm just thinking with our current situation, um, and I don't know if you have children, but uh, homeschooling is uh, a fresh hell that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. So I'm just wondering if um, Durex, for example, could write a joke along the lines of the only thing more um, successful at contraception than uh, than Durex is homeschooling or something like that. Exactly. It, it's it's so inserted in the joke that it would travel with the joke potentially and have a, like a half-life of its own. Yeah, I, I think definitely, you know, there, there, are some, there are some brands that just let, you know, lend themselves more, more to the brand staying attached to the joke. I think, you know, it's, it's also specificity is funnier. So a joke where you say, blah, 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 Durex, blah, 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 is funnier by default than joke you say blah 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 condoms blah 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 so mm. it's that means that people will tell it with the brand attached also you know it's it's different a joke that you then tell you know tell your wife tell your kids tell your friends that is that's not the same as like another brand so you know if trojan came along and tried to steal Durex's gags it'd be really obvious and they'd never do it so i think you're sort of safe from other brands um but yeah you're, you're right that's that's yeah. that's I think, and, and there are there are always sort of certain themes that come up. You know, when 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 you begin, especially when you've got a hive mind of, of writers all sort of throwing into the same pot. You know, it, it would have been the well. I don't remember whether we started with. I think we started with the news story rather than anything else. But once you've got Durex and you've got the idea that Durex, you know, other things can be a more effective contraceptive, you can then get more than one gag out of that. And I think if you spread them out, that's that's you know, yeah. yeah. So have you, can you share a process um, that you go through to, um, to try and figure out how you insert comedy into a brand? And um, you might not want to give away the, uh, the secrets of the trade, but I know you've also got some training sessions coming out that I've signed up to. So um, if you can't tell us what the process is that you go through, perhaps you could tell us a bit about the training uh, that's you coming up and how people can get involved. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm worryingly honest and upfront with our process because I think I, 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 I dare anyone to try and replicate it. You know, it, it's, it's, it's not just the process that, that does what we do, but what we do is really simple. Like step one, we, we start with a brand and we just pick apart their audience, their message. We, you know, we, we basically put everything there is to do with them and the product and their offer and the services and the pain points they solve into one big pot. So that's like a sort of, you know, a, a pot of words. We then work out, right, well, you know, what is their audience going to be interested in that isn't that brand? And we put all those interests in another pot and we just smash things together and then jokes appear. That, that, that sounds really stupid, but that is the process. We, you know, we, you throw a lot of shit at a wall. Our, our hive mind process is designed so that our clients only ever see the best 5%, say, of, of what, we, what we generate. So, it, you know, it's it's all about just throwing ideas together so our but the, tra the training you mentioned is, is the first time we've ever tried to actually teach people what we do it's been a really interesting process because i'm i'm not a comedy writer right you know i, I was a tv producer i've worked with loads of comedy writers i think if i was a comedy writer i'd have been distracted by writing jokes and never started a company like this but we've broken down the process that most of our writers sort of use without thinking into a really simple uh four stage process that any anyone in theory can follow um and yeah there's i, I think there's links all over our website so if, if anyone heads there they'll, they'll, they'll eventually be sort of pointed towards that training but it's it's really fun you know it, it's it, it's 
just breaking down that method, I realized, oh, actually, do you know what? I can write the jokes as well. You know, I, I, I'd still rather let them do it. They're better than me. But it's and that, that process, super simple. You, all you're really doing, because right, the most important thing about a joke, for any, you know, whether it's a brand, whether it's a, a, a dad joke, is that you've got a clever twist or a surprise in the middle. And you basically go from one thing over here to another thing over here via that twist that makes them make sense. So the process in our training uses... Uh, contrasts and similarities between two things to like identify a sort of proto joke in the middle and then you can finesse it it's it's way simpler than it should be but jokes mm. are, jokes are easy because it's all in the editing and that's 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 key is like once you've got the idea down on, on paper editing it can make the difference between like one out of ten and ten out of ten so yeah, yeah. but uh, that's I'd, I'd be interested to see if anyone wants to try that training out because you know it, it's 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 ve it's very new I'm sure there are, we could make it even easier to follow, but um, yeah, so I'd lo love to get any thoughts, any feedback, and I, th I think it could be useful. Yeah, definitely. So, so when I, once I put this video on the group, if you wouldn't mind putting the links to the training yeah, underneath so people can see it, that would be great. Um, I think even if people aren't brave enough to bring it into their business just yet, that training would be of interest to lots of people that uh, might like the idea of being able to tell better jokes, because um, it's quite a skill. Um, and not necessarily one that I have, but um, it's one. I think it's one of those things that a lot of people would like to be better at, um, but just don't feel that they can do. So I think it's you know really interesting. It's great that you're offering it for free as well. So so what would your ideal client look like if you were if you wanted to if you could pick any brand or any industry and you could say right these are these are the, my ideal clients. What would they be? Honestly, I think like my dream client would be like a like a massive drinks brand, like you know, like a like a uh, a fun WKD or something like that. Mm, yeah, but like slightly classier. There's 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 one there's there's one in mind that we came very close to signing, and then the pandemic happened, and they kind of shut down all their plans. But um, basically, I think drinks brands are fun. I think um, you know, I, I think obviously as much as B two B can be more successful. Consumer facing is great because there's a big, there's a big audience. You know, I, I think the, the one thing that's true of comedy is that you don't know going in what you need coming out. So, you know, it's all about testing. So the bigger the audience, the easier it is to go, right, here, you know, here's some stuff. Did it work? Did it not? I, I always found that, you know, month two is way more successful than month one because we, we, we're learning about what people actually engage with, interact with, and you know what what levers they've got in their brain. So yeah, I, I think big B two C brands would be the dream. But in, in all honesty, like the, the the joy of what we do is there is no you know we, we discussed this when we first spoke. You know a lot of a lot of agencies sort of go right. We're we're the agency for plumbers, or we're the agency for accountants. Fuck that. Like we're the agency for jokes. So and and there are no companies that we don't want to make jokes for. And actually the process is so fun that like sometimes if a brand is too fun to begin with on the surface, it's, it's less fun making the jokes. Whereas if, if you know, it's, it's like a small accountancy firm actually would be, would be great, would be a great uh, client. And I think also their audience would be so much more receptive because they would be so surprised. You know, the, 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 that pattern interrupt will be bigger. Whereas I think, if you know if if um, yeah if if a, a massive brand starts making jokes then they their audience is still going to be a bit skeptical until until you make sure that they're they're nailing it each time yeah no, definitely i think if you take a quite a gray um sterile conservative industry uh, where they're all pretty much the same and they're all very like accountancy or surveillancy or estate agents or whatever and then you made it funny it would it would stand out. Dave Trot, the um, the creative, talks about this. He talks about car ads and how essentially your brain just puts oh there's another car ad and just puts it in this car ad bucket and yeah. they all sort of merge together and you don't really know which ones for which because they're all very similar. Mm -hmm. So by doing something completely different, that's how you make your brand stand out rather than just becoming just another car ad. Um, yeah. yeah, that's that's really interesting. So um, how do people get in touch with you? Um, you'll put some links hopefully underneath yeah i'll put some links video. under the video but whitelevelcomedy.com simple simple as that you know it's um yeah i mean I'm, I'm easily found everywhere else but whitelevelcomedy.com uh wl comedy on twitter white level comedy or one word on facebook google <laughs> is yeah. you know honestly google is the best way to reach us but yeah and and cool. i think the, the the main thing is i'm always up for a chat you know i i think some of our best clients have come out of conversations where 
people didn't think they were in a position to work with us or, or didn't think they could work with us, but they were just like, oh, let's, I want to find out more about this. So get in touch. I, I think one thing I love is stepping through a business and a brand and just having to think about the ways we can take what you're already doing and, and, and make it funny. So, okay. um, yeah. So a big part of what we do at Six Sales is um, B2B. So um, if you were a client of ours, we would be looking for clients um, for your company. I'm curious, do you ever write jokes specifically for your ideal customers and use that in your prospecting? Do you know, funnily enough, it's something that we have avoided until very recently. So we, you know, my, my sort of position originally, and it's probably partly a cautious one, was, you know, if, you, if you're trying to sell pens with comedy, that's hard enough. Imagine selling comedy with comedy, it gets really meta. Actually, that was bullshit. And I, I, I was believing my own hype because truth be told, yeah, we can't make jokes about comedy, but we can make jokes about social media marketing. You know, that, that's, it's, it's, it's really easy. So we've only recently started doing that we're still um so what, what we what we've been doing recently for the last month or so is every week we'll do a twitter takeover of a given brand and then we'll, so we'll write jokes for a brand that didn't hire us and we'll turn those into a video and put that out uh it's, it's basically my girlfriend in front of a green screen in the corner of the flat but it looks kind of high production we did one of those for ourselves and it got a great reaction so it's so now like, all right let, let's just accept that we can write material for ourselves i'm still wary of overdoing it i think i prefer to talk about comedy and marketing and use the discursive nature and that's that's because in a, in a weird way the first time you see a joke from us before you understand what we do and before you understand that you know we write these based on the audience and we write you know write these for a brand if you see something you don't find funny you go well they're not funny so it's you know because of course it's not it's not written for you chill out so you know it, I, I think i'd still much rather people find us to, sort of waxing lyrical about why comedy's great and then they can see some of the jokes and they already understand um yeah so so that's why our twitter feed is never going to be a laugh a minute you know we're, we're not a joke publisher you know we, we could really easily just try and win the internet we're not we're just trying to win the hearts and minds of our clients but it's definitely you know, we're, we're building up a really nice repository of, uh, of, of, sort of jokes about social that, that we're going to start weaving into our emails and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's going okay. to be a bit fun. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, any final thoughts? Um, we're coming up on time, I think. So um, anything that you'd particularly like to, to finish on, Adam? No, I mean, I think, you know, obviously, the, 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 if people would love to work with us, I'd love to hear from them. That, that goes without saying. But I won't, you know, I, 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 th I, I think... I won't bore everyone with the details of, uh, of, of, of what that entails. That's easy to find out. But, but yeah, I, I think just the, the most important thing that I like to sort of say, and, it, and it's, it's, really, it's really obvious, but, but if you can make an audience laugh, you'll make that audience laugh. You're like over time, mm. you know, consistency is key. That's the other thing. So one joke isn't going to do it, but being, you know, consistently showing up with funny content and entertaining content and engaging content. And it doesn't all need to be jokes, but it does all need to be engaging and well thought out. And you know, every, like, as you all know, every piece of marketing needs a purpose and jokes can be a massive part of that. And I think, um, yeah, sh show up consistently and entertain, but don't be afraid of trying. That my favorite, my favorite thing, like most people are furious with the algorithms for crushing, oh, you know, no, no one saw my post. That's great for experimentation. Because you make a joke, as long as your jokes aren't offensive, if you make a joke and it's not funny, 100 people might see it. You make a joke that is funny, 10,000 people might see it. Mm -hmm. So what have you lost from those 100 seeing that and thinking you're not funny? Nothing. So ex experiment, try, have the balls. And yeah, make, make them laugh. Because it's also, it's way more fun to make your socials funny than it is just to trot out another sales pitch. So yeah. ju just enjoy your day more. <laughs> That's the other thing, yeah. I don't know how you focus on running a business when you're not a comedy writer, when you've got all of this comedy writing going on. I'd just be constantly trying to sit in there trying to write jokes um, and not getting any action in my day job. Instead, right, that, that's the joy, is instead I get to just demand jokes. So, and I still get to take the credit. So, you know, it's, it's, I, they're still mine. I'm still editing them. Um, but, you know, the hive mind really is like an extension of my brain, right? So you know i can put a brief in they'll just whirl around and give me great jokes i'll take the best and present them and, and that is way more satisfying than writing them myself and writing bad jokes myself so right. i think yeah it's easy not to get distracted because our guys are so good 
that I can't try and beat them. Fair enough. Good stuff. Nice way to end. Adams, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Really interesting. I'll definitely be looking forward to your, uh, your training session and the four-step process. Um, if you make sure that you put the, um, the details in, the, in the, uh, the comments once the video goes up on the, on the group, that would be great. Um, and uh, thanks once, once again. Have a great day. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. See you later. Cheers.